In this video, I'm going to give you some tips and strategies for creating do-it-yourself infographics. First up, let's look at some examples. All of these examples were created in PowerPoint. So they're a very good indication of what you can do with software that you probably already have. So first up, this was the first infographic I ever created. At that point in time, I had a great love for yellow and gray together. Um, and I had this font that I wanted to use as well. So on the left hand side of the screen, you can see a snapshot of uh, it's probably about a quarter of the infographic. Now this one is actually um, a conference paper. So for this particular presentation, we were looking at how um, information professionals use Twitter, how they construct their identity and how that relates to their professional identity um, and their work online identity. So um, it was a research project and we had quite a lot of findings, but we opted, actually we requested from the conference um, that we could provide those findings as an infographic and a curated set of resources in Storify rather than as a traditional paper because it felt like a better format um, to convey this particular topic. So um, this is only a very small portion of it on the left because it was an extremely long infographic. Um, on the right hand side, you can see where I've zoomed into a section of the infographic, which isn't actually represented on the left. Um, and here you can see that we're representing information around a couple of different types of things. Um, namely, we're uh, looking at their tweets per week. And we've got some um, fast facts um, on the left in a yellow. And you can see that we observed these things. And on the right hand side of the screen, you can see self-reported. So um, the participants uh, reported that they sent uh, greater than 81% of uh, tweets per week. Um, but in reality, you can see that um, the story might be a bit different. Now, what I will highlight here is that I haven't actually used uh, the graphing function in PowerPoint to create that graph. I actually did it by um, drawing boxes for uh, the uh, different numbers and then putting it on a grey background. Um, and I did that because I have some more flexibility then to make it look the way I wanted. But some other things here that are important, um, throughout this infographic you'll see that there is a, um, a consistent use of the magnifying class to represent data that we observed versus the, uh, the pen on the paper which is the self-reported data from the participants who completed the survey. Um, so just these consistent things add um, some consistency to the infographic and help bring it all together as does using um, a consistent uh, font and a cons consistent color scheme. Okay, this one is not one I created. It is in fact one that uh, was created by an IAB 260 student last year. This is her persona poster for assignment two. Um, and she has done an excellent job here. This was a uh, this was a high distinction assignment, and it also won the student's uh, choice for the best information in the poster. Um, so you can see here that this is quite a complex document, but it's very well executed and done in PowerPoint. These are probably not quite what you'd expect to see as examples of infographics. They're a little bit different and they're a little bit um, briefer. Uh, these are actually from my PhD thesis. So for each of the participants in my PhD, I wrote up about a page of uh, contextual information about them. And on the opposite page, they each had um, a faux social media profile. Um, and in that profile, you can see that I represented um, visually information that is important to understand about those participants when you are considering the data and considering my findings. So in this case, I used a few different things. I did them in PowerPoint. I um, commissioned someone on Fiverr, an artist in the Ukraine, to draw the avatars. So they um, actually have elements that relate to the participants so that uh, they visually uh, represent the participants in my mind. Um, I bought a couple of things for this. Actually, I only bought one thing. I bought some uh, digital scrapbooking papers off Etsy to create the backgrounds for the profile, um, behind the profile pictures. And this was otherwise all done in PowerPoint. So this next one's a little bit different again and probably something you might recall seeing before. A couple of years back, our school was looking at developing some guidelines for students and the document ended up being a couple of pages long. 
And I thought that is crazy and there must be a simpler way to convey this information about our expectations of students and what students can expect, expect from us. So I created these um, kind of infographic style um, versions and we use them in our slide deck throughout semester, um, and, but particularly in semester one. So here's one of them, here's another one, and here's another one. So all three of those were created using icons from the service that I'm about to tell you about today and were made in PowerPoint. So really simple. Um, and because I've already got these with the boxes laid out, it's very easy for me to create um, other similar types of material just by quickly dumping the images over the top. So um, let's talk about some tools then. So I've talked about PowerPoint already, um, but I'm gonna to talk to you about some tools that are specifically designed for creating infographics. So the first one is PictureChart. PictureChart um, is dubbed an easy to use infographic maker. So you can use this to create infographics and then you can export them. It's a free service. You will get a little picture chart icon on, I think it's the bottom of your infographics, but there are some great templates um, that you can look through and choose from, or you can, I believe, be a little bit more flexible with it um, I don't think you can create something that is completely your own design, but if you're not feeling um, particularly confident with your um, skills using something like Photoshop or um, your ability to manipulate images and things in PowerPoint, then this type of tool could be really useful for you. It's one that our master's students have used quite a bit when they've been creating personas for themselves. Okay, so the next one is Infogram. This one creates charts and infographics as well, and it has a free option. You can scroll through and have a look um, at the different templates and things available. Um, it talks about creating your infographics in three steps. Choose a template, visualize your data, and publish and share. You can search to see what other people have created as well, um, and you can also download your uh, finished product from here. And, or you can embed it in other places, which is great for embedding it in your blog. So um, here we have some featured charts that people have made using this tool. Um, have a scroll through and see the kinds of things that people have done and it'll help you get a feel for what you can actually do um, with this particular tool. Um, here, for example, is something about a European youth event and you can see the way that they've um, arranged information here. Next up is VisMe. This one is a bit more than an infographic tool. It also allows you to create presentations, HTML5 content. Um, so there's a range of different things you can do here. Uh, oh, they specify you can make reports, web content, product um, presentations, and wireframes. Um, so it's a very flexible tool. Um, and again, you can create uh, infographics here. Have a scroll through and see the kinds of things that um, people have created. Down the bottom of the page here, we can jump in and have a look at some of the things that people have done. So all of these tools are kind of click to publish, really easy graphical user interfaces that um, have the style and the design already built in. So you don't necessarily have to think about that element, um, but you do have to think about the information design. So you've got to think about how the information is organized on the page um, and how it relates to everything else on the page. So um, you can see here, just one example of, of something someone's built. So of all the tools we've shown so far, I actually don't use any of them. Um, I tend to create my infographics, as I mentioned before, in PowerPoint or using Photoshop, um, but I have used Canva before and I recommend that you take a look at it. It's a really flexible tool for creating all types of um, visual or design content. We'll have a look at the About page to give you a bit more information about what they do. Um, they have an iPad app. It also works in a web browser, so you can choose which way you want to go. Um, and there's just so many different things you can do in here and so many templates for every different possible type of thing you could want to create. Um, it's a really neat product and I would recommend that if you don't have experience with something like Photoshop or um, access to something like Photoshop, then it's definitely worth having a look at Canva to see um, what you can do there. Even if you don't create your whole infographic there, you might be able to use it to create elements that you can then put into your uh, PowerPoint version if that's how you're going to build your infographic. 
Just before we move on to the next one, I'll just hover over templates and give you a look at the kinds of things that are here. Um, book covers, presentations, business cards, letterheads, social graphics, infographics. So even if you don't want to use it to create your infographic, have a look at some of the other things you can do there. It's an incredibly useful tool. And the last one that I wanted to show you is Easily. Um, again, this is a tool you can use to create infographics. Um, you can read through the information about the site to find out more about the types of things they do. But if you have a look at the homepage, you can see some examples of things created by other people um, that use the tool. I would say that most commonly when I set a kind of infographic type task, um, students do gravi gravitate towards picture chart and I think there's a reason for that. It's quite a good, um, easy to use tool. So perhaps give that one a go first if you haven't um, had any other recommendations. Uh, but all of these tools on here do get rated well um, and are really good useful tools for different kinds of things. So if you're like me and you would rather have your own design and have more control and flexibility, you can do that um, really easily with only a few supplies. Um, you'll need PowerPoint or Keynote. Uh, so if you want to create them the way I do, that's how I mostly do mine. You might need Photoshop if you want to do a bit of manipulating of images. Uh, for example, you might find an icon that's black and you want to make it white. Um, so you can uh, get a copy of Photoshop CS2 for free, which I've linked from this week's weekly learning materials for you to have a look at. In addition to software, you're also going to need sources, sources for icons, sources for fonts, and sources for inspiration. And I'll talk a bit more about those in a moment. First up though, let me tell you about the most useful thing you'll learn about today, and that is the Noun Project. The Noun Project is quite possibly my favorite thing on the internet ever. It is an amazing source of icons. Um, you can search here and find icons for just about anything. Um, let's do a little search for uh, infographic, for example. So um, all of the icons on the Noun Project are Creative Commons licensed, which means you can use them as long as you cite. So you can find an image you like and want to use and you simply click on that image and then you can download it. Now, um, if you are just accessing this for the first time, you'll need to create an account in order to download it. Um, I have a pro account and because I have a pro account, I don't have to reference any icons when I use them. I don't have to include a citation. I think that costs me about 99 US dollars um, a year but it saves me hours and hours and hours of time in writing the citation on the images. Now, when you download the images, because um, you won't have a pro account, it will actually have the Creative Commons license information immediately under the image. I believe you can chop that off and then pop up a caption on the image yourself if you wanna put it into um, your website or a blog post. Um, this, I cannot rave hi highly enough about this tool. Spend five minutes on here and you'll be um, a devotee as well. Let me just show you a couple of things in the dashboard. Um, you can have this thing called kits. Now, when you don't have a pro account, you can only have one kit. Um, you'll actually see here the, the uh, little onesie icon that I used in my thesis that I showed you earlier. Um, and you can see here my favorites folder. This is um, where I used to dump all my icons before I had a pro account, and I'd really like to go through and tidy that up. Um, but you'll recognize some of the icons in there. For example, the game controller I use on the play icon on my unit sites. So this tool is awesome. You pretty much don't need to go anywhere else to find icons for your assignment, um, but there are heaps and heaps of places you can go. But this is a very good place to start, and I highly recommend it. So while I love, love, love the Noun Project, there are also lots of other places you can go to find images that you can incorporate into your infographics. I've listed a bunch of places and a bunch of links you can go to to find more places on the unit site, um, as well as some uh, information about finding fonts. For example, I use Pinterest to keep my fonts organized. Um, I've got a board called Fancy Fonts where I pin fonts uh, and particularly these infographic style representations of fonts um, when I see them on Pinterest so that when I'm looking for a font later I don't have to trawl through the millions of fonts on the internet I can come here and look at the ones that I've already pinned because I like something on them 
Um, so this you're welcome to use as a resource for you, but it is a great way um, to create your own little resource bank of things that you like. I'm also in the process of creating a, a Pinterest board for the fonts that I've got installed on my computer um, because I often, when I'm making a presentation, I forget what I've got um, and it would be helpful to have a quick visual reference to let me know what I've got so I don't have to go looking for other fonts all the time. So lots and lots of resources on the unit site for you to explore, um, helping you with things like fonts and images. So we've talked about what goes into the infographics and where you can get that from, but what we haven't talked about is how you actually go about designing an infographic. And these principles are going to apply for your persona poster too. So um, good infographics start with a few things. First of all, you need good data. Um, you have to actually have data that is reliable and valid, and then you have to do good analysis. So it's not enough just to kind of whack um, descriptive data or numbers or charts on a page, you've got to actually think about the story you're telling, you've got to find a story, do the analysis, find your story, um, and then design that story in a cohesive way so that it is told um, in this one discrete object. Um, they need to be visually impactful and they need to have good information design. So that doesn't just mean make them aesthetically pleasing, it means make sure that you place things, place the information on the page so that it tells um, a logical and cohesive story. So for me, the first step in creating an infographic then is to organise your data. So find your data, sort it, organize it in some way. If you find data in a secondary source, go back to the original source and double check the data and reference it to that original source rather than the secondary source. Also, organize your references at this point. So just because it's visual doesn't mean you don't have to um, acknowledge other people's IP. So you have to make sure that you know where the data is coming from and this can get very messy. So what I usually do as I'm going through is have an Evernote note open and I jot down um, each piece of data and where it's come from along with which icons I've used so that I can create references for them later. So um, make sure you keep that in mind. As you're working with your data and looking for a story in it, there are a few different things you can look for. Obviously, you want to look for trends, so things that um, seem to be trends across the data. Um, but there are other things to look for that uh, allow you to uh, find a real hook for your infographic. Um, there is an awesome video on lynda.com about creating infographics, and they talk about some things that you can consider in um, finding good stories in the data. One of the things they say to look for is outliers. So um, an outlier is um, something in the data that uh, is, sits away from everything else. So it's something quite different and unexpected. Um, so those things can be really interesting to explore. Another thing that they suggest is to look for counterintuitive facts. So things that seem a bit wrong when you look at them. And so those things are kind of interesting and can help you to find a hook for your story. So once you're working with your data and you're organizing it, you need to then find your story and you need to work out how to tell your story. So um, what is it that you actually want to say with your infographic? Um, think about it having a purpose and an aim. Don't just kind of throw things on a page and, and make it look good. It's got to have that story. Um, and then you've got to actually identify the data that helps you to tell that story and work out where to position it and how best to represent it in order to tell the story. So once you have got your story and you know where the data is coming from and you've got your data ready, then you have to plan out what you're going to do. Um, often I will just start creating infographics without thinking about these um, higher level things and invariably I end up with a mess and I have to kind of go backwards and redo things. So first of all, think about how big your infographic is going to be, what, what dimensions do you want it to be? Um, and then you need to kind of plot out how the information is going to fit on the, on the page. Now for someone like me who tends to work 
um, visually by constructing things as I go. I find this quite difficult because I often don't know what the, what the full story is before I finish. Um, so I may have um, you know the, the nebulous idea of a story, but I am I'm actually creating um, the story as I put the the work together. So. If you can create a really rough wireframe of how the information is going to look on the page, if that doesn't work for your workflow, that's also fine. Okay, so then you have to design the stuff. Um, and what you need to think about is how you can best represent the data that you've got. Um, again, the lynda.com video on infographics is awesome on this, and they talk about um, different ways um, to represent particular types of data. For example, they say that pie charts are really useful to show breakdown of data. Um, into its component parts. So if you want to know how many people said this and how many people said this, then it's quite um, good to uh, represent that in a pie chart. Um, if you want to do size comparisons, bar charts work well. Line graphs can help you to show changes over time. Venn diagrams allow you to sh um, see um, overlaps and flow charts are really good for showing hierarchy. Another thing you need to consider um, with design is those design and aesthetic elements. You need to think about size, so size of um, images, size of textual information, size of the whole infographic, typography, so what fonts are you going to use. I recommend trying to stick to two or three at a maximum to give you some cohesiveness. What is your colour scheme? Um, what shapes are you going to use? how are you going to use images and how are you going to lay the whole thing out. So these are all elements that you need to think about. So these are my tips for creating a well-designed infographic. First of all, keep it simple. Um, don't use stacks and stacks of colours and different types of icons that don't kind of match each other. So keep it simple and consistent. Um, choose a colour palette before you get started so that you know what kinds of colours you're going to incorporate. Um, before I showed you the example of Olivia's persona poster from last year which had lots and lots of colour on it but she still had a colour scheme with the chalkboard background and the chalk um, coloured writing and lines and things on it and so that kept it consistent. You'll also notice with Olivia's poster, she didn't choose colours that don't have the same visual weight. So the colours were all quite bright, so the colours match each other, even though it's multicoloured. Um, you need to balance visually heavy areas carefully. So if you've got lots of weight in the bottom right corner, you've somehow got to balance that out in the top left corner as well. My final tip is a simple one. It's probably also a personal one, but I feel very strongly about it. Don't use clip art. Clip art always looks just a little bit kind of cheap or not as um, aesthetically pleasing. Instead of going for clip art, use one of the other icon sources or image sources around the web where you can get free images to use um, and you will have a much more polished product. So now that I've told you about a bunch of tools that you can use to create infographics, I'm now going to tell you about your play and share activity for week four. And here they are. So your play activity is to create a little bit of an infographic. What I'm going to ask you to do is take the key quote and type that you came up with in your homework from last week's class and create a one slide infographic about you and your use of social media. So in addition to the key quote and the type, I want you to include your name um, and some demographic information. That's it, nothing huge. What I basically want you to do is have a play with some different tools and icon sources to kind of get you thinking about assignment two. Um, if you're clever and do this well, you can actually use this as the start of your persona poster. So when you're done with this activity, please post it on your blog. Don't forget if you're completing the play activity for this week, you need to complete it by the end of week five, Sunday. And that's actually two weeks away because we, uh, sorry, it's three weeks away. You would normally have two weeks because we have the break next week. The share activity is very simple. I want you to share an infographic or more than in one infographic with your peers by making a short post on your blog. Your task is to highlight something about an infographic. So show us a good one, a bad one, an interesting one, a well-designed one, a funny one, an awful one. 
um, your task is just to uh, pick one and then tell us what you think about it. It doesn't have to be a long post, just a few words to um, explain why you made that selection. So I hope that this video has helped you um, understand how you might create infographics and that it will help you along with your assignment to persona posters. I'm looking forward to seeing the little infographic elements that those of you who um, are completing the play task this week create. And I will leave it at that. There's lots of information for you to look through on the unit site. Um, and just keep in mind, you don't have to read everything. It's just there in case you are interested in pursuing this further. Okay, have fun with that play and share task and I'll leave it with you.